Hundreds of thousands of people are living with cancer in the UK, each of course facing many difficult decisions along the way. Two years ago, Steve Evans was told he had just 12 months to live. For a while, he underwent treatment that helped to both improve the quality of his life and extend it. Now Steve has decided to stop all aggressive cancer treatment. He's chosen to receive only palliative care, as in his words, he nears the end of his journey. We'll be following his story here on Breakfast. Our reporter John McGuire has been back to see him again. When we were so poorly a few weeks ago, what happened was that uh, I had to let everything go. I had to relax. I had to just understand that the journey was starting to come to an end. And the only thing that my brain was really happy with was fishing. Because it was the only thing I liked doing that you couldn't identify as being a job. A few weeks ago, it seemed highly unlikely that Steve Evans would still be around to go fishing, but here he is. Look at that. Much better than having a day job, you know. He was diagnosed with terminal stomach cancer two years ago and was given just 12 months to live. He is, though, still very much living his life as fully as he possibly can. But along with his wife and two daughters, Steve's decided not to undergo any more chemotherapy. But when you come to the end of your journey or you think your journey is about to end, we all know what the words are, really. But they're not words I like to use. But it's very simple. How much can you take? But not only just you, my friend, how much can everyone else take? And if this is how it ends, well, then it ends. But it didn't. But we decided, we being the family, that we wanted a quality of life rather than a quantity. We wanted a quality. I wish I could meet you in person. But Although an intensely private decision, many aspects of Steve's life are now very public. Thank you very much, Louise. A recent appearance on Breakfast saw his Twitter followers swell by 9,000 in a matter of minutes. Many of those are affected by serious illness too, and Steve's attitude to his cancer provides solace for some and inspiration for others. If us sharing helps other people, well, perhaps that's the reason I've got the condition. Because have you ever thought that? Have you ever thought what would happen if, if you were in my position? I think you think two things, you know. And I think it's the same question. I think you think to yourself, well, I must have this for a reason. That's the positive. And it's where we live. Or you think to yourself, why me? That's a negative. But it's the same question, isn't it? And I've never thought, why me? We've sort of just got on with it. So Steve, we're back at the We've civic come back to the Civic Hall, Hall in Wolverhampton where he used to work and still volunteers and where he's about to be included on the Black Country Wall of Fame. Now those people are people within the industry who are known, who have made a difference. And Edward Elgar. I don't live in that company. No. Well, it's quite a serious point because apparently now I do and I can prove it because down there... Yeah. You'll be on a banknote next, Steve. Well, my friend John did comment that this was very similar to a name plate that I had when we were at school that my mum used to sew into the back of my clothes. <laughs> uh, not typical in a 15-year-old, but what can you do? It was the clothes that were valuable. He's being immortalised here for his contribution to the area's entertainment industry. It's just one of many aspects of his varied life, one of many places where the name Steve Evans will live long into the future. John Maguire, BBC News, Wolverhampton. And Steve's with us this morning. We are, deli right here we are so sofa. delighted to see you. Did you actually Thank catch you. that fish? Uh, yes, I did. Did you really? Yes, I did. And may I say, my friend Gary Steele, who you only see the back of him, yeah. he's the person who teaches me fishing. And when I showed him that clip, he was mortified. Why? He said, I am I included in the clip? I said, yes, Gary, you are. So he came around the house especially just to see a picture of his back. <laughs> oh, no. Not really any good at all. So how are both of you this morning? Well, are you well? We're, we're very well. We're absolutely delighted that you're here. And I know it's been a long journey uh, for you to get here and everything, so we really appreciate it. And we know that lots of people will be delighted to see you too. I'm um, talking about Noddy Holder, first of all. So you're along <laughs> the, the wall of fame with him. That's, that, that 
is difficult to cope with because people say lovely things about the way I talk about the condition and the journey, you know. But being on the wall of fame, that's for industry people who have sort of made a difference. Now that's someone else's business, you know, that, that has to be taken seriously. The first time that they decided to put someone on it, that person was Noddy Holder. Well, of course, I'm a man from Wolverhampton in his 50s. And please don't misunderstand this, Noddy Holder isn't in fact a human being. <laughs> no, he is God. Not our God, he is God. Yeah. And uh, they said to me, oh, uh, yeah, Noddy Holder's coming. Will, will, you, uh, will, will you just look after him for the night? I, I was, I was starstruck. I couldn't well, even and speak. And there you are now alongside him, which is just brilliant, isn't it? Uh, that was amazing. That was an amazing day. And, and things like that, I don't have any perspective to put it into other than the words are simple, aren't they? I'm, I'm humbled, you know, and, mm. and it's amazing. I mean, all of this is, all of this is, I mean, how real is this? You are really here. I am really here. I'm really in Salford. And it's a wonderful place. And, and how you, you, you look after me is fantastic. I've got my own makeup artist. <laughs> and I borrowed everything. her earlier. Oh, yeah, she did say, <laughs> but, you know. Now, we're in danger of just letting you make us laugh, which you always do. Which you do. Because that <laughs> happened last time. But uh, without wishing to change the tone of what you're talking about, I, I know, because you, you were just explaining to us a moment ago, about what all of this yeah. you're referencing is meaning to you when you're having your worst times. And there's no, you don't disguise the fact you're having some very bad times at the moment, physically, that there are moments in hospital. Just take us through when you're at those low points, and I'm looking at loads of tweets right now, just because you're sitting here. Well, if we, if, if, if we, okay, I know where you want to go. Let, mm. let, let's be aware of the people are having their breakfast. Yeah. So, so everything has to be, has to be couched in, in, in that environment. Um, but Twitter, I had no idea. Charlie, I had no idea what it was. You know that. Me a hashtag. I've no idea, Louise, what a, what a hashtag was. And apparently I was trendy on Twitter, but I could have been trendier, uh, but David Beckham had his hair cut or something. And, 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 and I wasn't as trendy as I could be. So. What has happened is that I then came on your show mm. uh, on the Saturday morning and I came on, as it said in John Maguire's lovely piece, that um, I came on with, with 1,800 followers, which I thought was lovely. And uh, at the end of it, I had 11,000. I mean, that sort of knocked us about a bit. Because what do you do with 11,000 people, which is now 18,000? Well, why I'm talking about that, because it answers your question. Mm -hmm. When you've got 18,000 people on tw Twitter, you're never alone. And you start to develop a relationship at a distance. And the people on Twitter are no more important than any other element of my family, of my Facebook friends, of my close network of friends that are on my phone. But they are very important. And now I have these people who, late at night, when I have my dark times, when I'm in hospital. Um, as dark as I'll go in this interview oh. is that, let us be very clear, this isn't, a this isn't an act, but there is a veneer, and we might pierce it in a bit, because where I am now is, is not the best part of the journey. It is towards the very tight end of the journey. And when you're in hospital and the journey is nearly coming to an end, I don't want you to imagine what that's like, Charlie, because you've got to carry on working after this interview. Mm. But believe me, it is as horrible as you think it is, mm. because it's dark and you're by yourself. There's no one there other than nurses walking past and machines that constantly go bleep, which apparently nurses are the only people who can't hear. Strange mm. alarms. But I've got Twitter. So I go onto Twitter and there's as much love as any one human being can cope with there. And it doesn't matter how it's given, and you can just suck it off the phone. And it's better than any medicine, although the morphine sulfate, Louise, does help. I'm sure it does. And but something there's... called cyclozine. <laughs> well, I've never floated before. But I did last week, and I liked it. Did you? It was all right, yeah. and, and just to be clear, for people who don't know, I mean, you you're not going to have any more sort of aggressive treatments now, are you? No. That's your decision, isn't no, it? it is. It is, it is the, uh, 
the decision. We, we've had um, chemotherapy twice now, and it isn't without its drawbacks. Mm. It isn't without its side effects. Um, you can't eat, you're sick, and you're everything else. Um, you think of a side effect and it will, it will treat you by producing it, as if by wow. magic. Um, my journey isn't unique. Watching this this morning... People. You really I, have. I can't see the, the this me that other people see. I, I don't know who this is. I really am a bloke who used to work for Wolverhampton Council and still am. And I'm never prouder of those 32 years, you know. Well, and, and, and other people have, have tell me that, that, that there is this other Steve Evans now, that, that my friends, my old friends, go into a pub and there are two people talking about me. And it's not because of recent court appearances or anything like that, Charlie. It's not what you'd <laughs> expect at all. No, no, no. So uh, it, we are in the final, the final part of it. And it hasn't got a, a, a long way to go. And you just have to know, and this is, this is important, that, that there are other people, and they're on this journey. There's far too many people in the world who've got cancer, and far too many people who are terminally ill. But what makes our journey different? Well, what makes our journey different immediately starts with both of you. Because I don't know where it came from. But the amount of love that I've got in my life and Septina's got, because we're the same person, Septina and I are one unit, you imagine doing it by yourself. Yes. So don't worry about the medicine. Don't worry about anything else. If there's anyone out in the world watching this, having their cornflakes, be aware that if you become ill, like I am, the most important person isn't on the end of a phone called a doctor. It's not. It's the person who's already there. Mm. They're the person that's going to get you through this. Uh, that's what will happen. Uh, Steve, uh, Helen is sort of saying what everyone else is, I'm sure, is thinking, says, uh, watching Steve, uh, uh, he's such an inspiration. I admire him so much. Also got a few tears. Well, I'll, we're cry, thinking? I'll, I'll cry a bit myself. But yes, so, so this, this, uh, this Twitter thing, uh, can I do the, the, the... Do you know what it is now? Because you got it, got it you wrong can. last time. No, you can. I will, I, will, I will tweet it later. And right. I know lots of people are following okay. you. And I know you're going to be on Five Live as well. I am, yes, with Richard so Bacon this afternoon. People can follow you there as well. Thank you so much. It is just brilliant to have you here. Well, it's lovely. Thank lovely you for, to see for both of you it. in the person. <laughs> Thanks for the invitation. Oh. Let's see, time now, 8.29, which means it's time to get the news, travel and weather where you are. See you in a minute.